AirDrop. It is one of the greatest elements in the Apple ecosystem. It enables us to share files easily. Personally, I've used it many times before and it works great. However, on Windows, we generally think that we lack such an option, but we are wrong. There's an amazing software named SnapDrop. It is basically a cross-platform alternative of AirDrop, which enables us to share files across multiple devices. So, let's check it out by transferring an image from my iPhone to my Windows 10 running PC. First, we make sure that both of our devices are connected to the same network. This is really important. Then, we head over to the snapdrop.net on our PC. There, we are greeted with nice and simplistic UI. After that, we head over to the same page using our phone. And once we have done that, as you can see, it immediately shows our device, which is nice. However, since Snapdrop is a progressive web application, we can also install it. For example, in the Edge browser. But don't worry, it is super simple. All we have to do is click the plus icon and follow along. Now, we are ready to share files or messages between our devices. To share files, we tap on the device name and choose a file. To send a message, we right-click on PC or tap and hold in mobile. Then we type our message and send it. It is as easy as that. However, since this is a software-related channel, I will do something else instead. Since I don't want to stress out the Snapdrop's servers, I will run a local instance on a Docker container and use it instead. So, if you have decided to follow along, make sure that you have Docker installed on your machine. Now, let's look at how we can set up the project. First, we head over to the Snapdrop's GitHub repository, which you can find it in the description down below. Then, we just clone the project. After doing that, we head over to its directory. There, we type the command docker compose up d. This command will run the program in the background. Now, we are ready to test it. So, we head over to the localhost 8080 and nothing happens. See, if you are on macOS or in Linux, yours will probably work at this stage. But if you are on Windows like I do, then we need to make a simple change. To do that, we open up the project in a text editor. In my case, it is VS Code. Then we head over to the Docker, open SSH, and finally open up the create.sh file. There, we need to do nothing but to change the line endings. We can easily do that by going in the bottom and change it from crlf to lf. Now we can restart the application by using the command docker compose restart. Now, as you can see, it works. So, if I open it up on two different browsers, as you can see, they both recognize each other. And if I try to send a message from one to another, as you can see, it works as well. It's so cool, but how we can connect it from our phone? Well, we can easily do that by sharing our local host. And this is the topic of my first video on this channel actually, so you can find it on the top right corner as well. Anyway, to do that, I will be using a program named ngrock, which is a useful tool. In the desktop, I have an executable version of ngrock, so I will be head over to there. And once we are there, we execute the command ngrock http host header localhost 8080 and then mentioning the port which is 8080. When we execute that command, as you can see, it will bring us an URL. This is the URL that we use to access our program running at the port 8080. So we just quickly plug this URL in our phone. And there we go. Both of our devices are recognized. Now we can share files and send messages back and forth. Also, we can go a step further and deploy this into the cloud, so we can access it from whenever we want without stressing the original website. That said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If that is the case, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. See you next time. Take care.